to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ to his disciples jesus gave this wonderful privilege go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature mark chapter 16 verse number 15. today we're going to be thinking about how being evangelistic promotes and encourages faithfulness among God's children. We welcome you to our series of lessons on the subject of being faithful until death. As always, we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We hope that you've got your Bible and you'll locate that if you don't and have it ready as we're going to study the Word of God together. Today's lesson is being brought to you by uh, Christians, members of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ. They would love, in your area, the Church of Christ, would love for you to visit their assemblies. They'd love to, for you to come to Bible study and have Bible study with them. If you've got a Bible question or anything, they'd love to help you with that. And friend, we want you to know as well, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of God's Word as well. Please visit our website thegospelofchrist.com. We have a, a wide variety of Bible study material that's free and available for all. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our lessons, you can write to us or call us or email us. We'd be happy to send that to you free of charge. Friend, as we think today on the subject of faithfulness, one of the things that will promote and encourage, motivate every Christian to be faithful and remain faithful is being evangelistic for the Lord. If I'm staying busy, spreading the gospel, if I'm actively teaching the lost, if I'm seeing people leave sin and bring the joy of God into their life, that's only going to stimulate me more and more to be faithful to the Lord every day. And so we want to think for just a few moments with you about how evangelism motivates each of us to be faithful. Friend, if evangelism is going to motivate us to faithfulness, we have to approach evangelism with the proper attitude. Our attitude is everything. Attitude, someone once said, attitude determines altitude. I believe that's right. How I think determines how high I can go and what I can achieve. Gee, uh, the book of Proverbs teaches us this, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 7. And so, what are some good attitudes that will promote faithfulness and evangelism? Let's realize, number one, that evangelism is my business. It's not the elder's business alone. It's not the preacher's business alone. It's not the deacon's or uh, the evangelism minister's, but no. Evangelism is my business. It's every Christian's responsibility. Luke 19, 10, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And the Bible tells us, follow in His footsteps. 1 Peter 2, verse 21, go into all the world and teach the gospel. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. You know, when you think about whose business it is, is the business of the person who knows it. Uh, let, let me illustrate for you. Imagine this way. Imagine you're walking by a river and you see someone who slipped in and who is about to drown. And you can swim. You can save them. You could throw them a rope or you could help them. As you saw that person in the river over there drowning, would you say, hmm, I reckon somebody will come along eventually and save that fella. That's somebody else's problem. No, we wouldn't think very highly if somebody thought that. We would think, hey, that's, I need to help them. I can do something. I can at least try. That I need to take a personal responsibility and help saving that man from drowning. Well, how much more so for the Christian? Evangelism is your business. It's my business. Uh, people are dying every day in sin. There are people who are being lost and going to hell every day. The devil is actively trying to cause people to be lost. I need to take evangelism personally. 
I need to realize that's my business. Secondly, an attitude that will really help in evangelism is to say to yourself, I'm going to make time for evangelism. You know, sometimes we say, well, I just don't have enough time. I've got school. I've got work. I've got family. I've got recreation. I've got all these things that are taking up my time. Friend, could I ask you just a very simple question? Is there anything more valuable than the soul? Listen to what Jesus said in Mark 8, 36 and 37. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The souls of men are the most valuable thing of all. They are that which will live on when this world has perished. If that's the case, I need to make time to do evangelism. You know, and it's interesting, isn't it? The things that I really want to do, I can make time for. When it's a good day to fish, oh, I can make time to fish. If it's a good time to hunt, we can make time to hunt. If you like to play basketball or you like to play baseball or you like to work in the flower bed or garden or whatever your hobby may be, you can pretty much find time to do that, can't you? Well, friend, how much more so evangelism? An attitude that will really help in evangelism is, I will make time for evangelism. A third attitude that we mention is that evangelism will work today. Too many times people say, oh, we can't do evangelism. People don't want to hear the gospel. You can't just go and talk to somebody. Evangelism won't work today. Friend, people are still selling things the way they've always sold them. And while we're not trying to sell it, we are trying to persuade people to reach Jesus Christ and His blood through the gospel. You know, God's way is still the same today as it was in the first century. Isaiah 55 verse 11, God says, My ways are not your ways, nor are my thoughts your thoughts. It's not about what I think or what I feel. It's God's way. What is God's way? The gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Teaching somebody the gospel. Telling your friend, telling your neighbor, telling someone in your family that you love about Jesus Christ, that will work today because it's still God's way to save. God chose the foolishness of preaching to save the lost. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 21. The Word of God is still living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. We don't need all these newfangled ideas. Well, you know, God's way still works. Sitting down across from somebody whom you love and care for, telling them about Jesus and the hope of heaven, the joy of salvation, friend, I will promise you that still works today because the message is just as relevant and just as powerful as it ever was. And then here's another attitude. We need to say to ourselves, I can do this. I can, I can sharpen, and I can hone this to be a part of my talent. Sometimes people say, well, that's not my talent. I'm not good at evangelizing. I'm good at these other things, but I'm not good at evangelizing. Well, what if somebody said that? What if everybody had said that and you never had the opportunity to obey the gospel? Friend, we're not talking about things that you can't do, and we're not saying everybody's going to do it in the same way. Maybe yours is to encourage somebody to have a Bible study. Maybe you write them a card and invite them to Bible study. Maybe, maybe you set it up and let somebody else teach the study. Evangelism can be done in multiple ways, but you've got to realize I can use my talent and hone my talent and sharpen it so that this can be something I can do for God. It is the church's responsibility to take the gospel to the world. Ephesians 3 verses 10 and 11. What's the church? Me and you. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, we are the body of Christ, members individually, one of another. You know, sometimes I think we sell ourselves short. We're a lot like, if we're not careful, the one talent man in Matthew 25. You remember that story? Five talent man, two talent man, one talent man. The five talent man doubled his, two talent man doubled his. The one talent man buried his talent in the sand because he was afraid. Don't be like that one talent man. Each of us can evangelize and can do something for God and His cause. And then realize this, an attitude that is so important in evangelism is to realize whatever cost there may be to evangelism, it's worth it. Again, people may not think as highly of me because I'm trying to talk to others about the gospel. A lot of people will, 
but you may be made fun of. People may mock you. It may cost you time. It will cost you energy. It may cost you effort. It may cost you financially. But friend, please realize the cost of evangelism, out, it, and the benefit outweighs the cost. The goal, the benefit, and the prize of someone hearing the gospel and being saved outweighs the cost so much more than you could ever imagine. And then let's consider this. I want us to think for just a moment about some, some actions that will promote good evangelism. Not just our attitude, but I want to think about things we can do that will really promote and really open doors for evangelism. The first one is this. One of the things you can do that will open a multitude of doors to evangelize is live a good Christian life. Matthew 5:16. Let your light, Jesus says, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I uh, love the example of Acts chapter 4, verse number 13. The Jews are uh, going to question uh, Peter and John, and they question them. And Peter and John respond from the Scriptures. And the Bible says in Acts 4, verse 13, Then, after they responded from God's Word, then they realized... They had been with Jesus. As you think about things, the actions we can do, things we can do that really motivate greater evangelism, living a good Christian life will do so much to open doors, to help people see that you're trying to follow Jesus and do exactly what He wants. Uh, when people are hurting, when crisis come in people's life, when sickness or death or, or despair arises, and they know somebody who's got hope. You, the Christian. Don't you know they're going to turn to people like that? People who have hope. People who have joy that doesn't fade away. People who are excited about something beyond this world. Living a good Christian life opens doors and gives you opportunities to evangelize. You know, another action that will promote evangelism is, and it's really an action and an inaction as well, is don't be a hypocrite. I know this goes hand in hand with good Christian living. But friend, if you want to do something that will really open a lot of doors and promote evangelism, don't be a hypocrite. Don't, go to, don't dress up in a suit on Sunday and go to church and live like the devil the rest of the week. Don't say you're something and not be. Don't, don't pretend to talk like a Christian and go out and curse at work. Don't pretend to live a good moral life and everybody knows that you lie and cheat and steal and do things you ought not to. If you want to do something that will really help open doors for evangelism, show people you're not a hypocrite. Uh, Jesus, one of the things Jesus condemned the harshest in the New Testament was the hypocrite. Hypocrites, Jesus said, well does Isaiah prophesy about you saying, this people draw near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. The hypocrite is one of the great enemies of Jesus in Christianity and in the New Testament. And friend, if you want to turn people off from the Lord and His church, hypocrisy will do that quicker than anything you can imagine. A third action that will really help is faithfulness. We're not just talking about good Christian living, but someone who really makes Christ their top priority. Every time the doors are open, that person's there. Hebrews 10, 25. They don't forsake the assembly unless they're sick and can't be there. Matthew 6, 33. They're seeking first the kingdom at every opportunity that they have. This is someone who tries 100%. They're not perfect. None of us are. But they're sure trying 100% to live for Jesus every day. Let me ask you this. If you wanted to know about Christian living, you wanted to know about becoming a Christian, would you ask somebody who's a half-hearted Christian or somebody you know who's tried 100% every day? Well, I think we each know the answer to that, which ought to encourage us. Give it your dead level best every day. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And not for your glory, for Christ's glory, people will realize you're a Christian. And hopefully that will open doors just as well. And then, friend, we say this as an action as well. And it's something that's so important. If I'm going to do things that will promote evangelism, I've got to have the love and respect for lost people that I ought to. And here's what we mean by that. In Romans 10, verses 1 and 2, 
Paul said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they'll be saved. They have a love for God, a zeal for God, but not according to truth. There were lost people that Paul knew of. And you can imagine, Paul sees names and Paul sees faces in his mind and he thinks about these people and he says, my heart's desire and prayer is that they'll be saved. When you think about lost people, I want to have a genuine respect and love for those people. Hey, they're created in the image of God, just like I am. Genesis 1 verse 26 and 27, uh, Genesis 2 verse 7, they have a soul, just like I do. They're going to spend eternity somewhere, just like I want to spend eternity with God, just like me. They're, in, just, they're just like I was. They're in sin, and they need God's grace and love. To belittle or make fun of or look down our nose on, friend, is to forget where we once were as well. And so have a respect and a concern for lost souls as well. Now, friend, if we're really going to do things that will promote uh, evangelism and, in essence, promote faithfulness also, we need to realize that not giving in to alternative methods that don't help evangelism is something we've got to be careful for. And I know that's a lot to say, but let me put it this way. There are things that people are doing today as it relates under the guise of evangelism that aren't really going to help people grow closer to the Lord. L let me illustrate. Today, it is so popular, the entertainment avenue and entertaining people uh, as far as evangelism, people think that's the way to get people committed to the Lord. Now, friend, don't get me wrong. I understand there's nothing wrong with uh, on a secular level, people being involved in entertainment. Nothing wrong with entertainment. We're not saying there is. But entertaining someone to Jesus is not what you find in the Bible. Uh, you know, when you think about it this way, there's so many of these mega churches. And that's a lot of their whole emphasis is entertaining people. We want fun, fun, fun all the time. What happens when the fun's no longer fun? If you're in it for the fun, and the fun gets old, and the newness wears off, and the honeymoon effect is gone, what happens then? Well, they begin to drop like flies then, because fun isn't fun like it used to be. If the commitment is to fun, that isn't going to hold people. People need to be committed to something more than entertaining themselves. They need to make a commitment to Jesus Christ and a commitment to die, denying self and living for Him. Uh, another method that people use today is emotionalism. People want to get real emotional. You know, tell a, a big sad story and get everybody to sob or, you know, uh, tug on people's hearts. And I understand there's a place for emotion. But friend, emotionalism isn't going to get people to make that strong commitment. You know, you might can make somebody cry telling a sad story. What about making a commitment to Jesus every day? What about making that commitment beyond just, hey, I've got a warm, fuzzy, emotional feeling in my heart right now? What about tomorrow when that feeling is not, is not there, when it goes away? When that feeling fades, there has to be something. I'm not saying there's not a place for emotion and feeling, but it can't all be built upon that. Uh, also, let's realize that evangelism by example only is not going to save people. Now, don't get me wrong. You've heard me say as well that example is, is so important. But friend, if all I say to myself is, I'm going to evangelize by being a good example, the whole world's going to go to hell in a handbasket if everybody thinks that way. Somebody's got to actually open their mouth and say something. Yeah, we need to be a good example. Yes, being a good example will open doors, but you've got to walk through that door and say something. It's not enough just to be an example. When people know you're an example, You've got to open your mouth and say something about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let's realize some things that in and of themselves are, are not going to help people to make a commitment to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what then does a person need if they're really going... What ingredients would be necessary in someone's heart and mind if they were serious about promoting evangelism, which naturally promotes faithfulness? Number one... You need to have good working Bible knowledge. Study. What can we say to you today to be a good uh, worker for evangelism? Study. To show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2.15 Search the Scriptures. Acts 17.11 uh, Learn God's will. 
uh, know how to answer. And I'm not saying you've got to know how to answer every question. I mean, somebody comes up to you and says, what's the whole four horsemen of Revelation all about? Well, that's not what we're talking about. But we're talking about the reason for the hope that is in you. Why are you a Christian? Why do you have that joy? Why do you not get down like other people do when things happen? You must be looking for something else. What is it? Those are the kind of questions and answers that we're talking about today. And then, friend, to have a, a good part of your life, a, a good ingredient to promote evangelism is you need to have love and kindness and tact when talking to people. Mark chapter 10, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus. Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments, Jesus said. All these things I've done from my childhood. The Bible then tells us something very special. Jesus looked at that man and loved him. Now that man wasn't right. Jesus knows that man's going to go away and choose his riches over him. But Jesus loved that man's soul. Friend, if you're going to have the ingredients necessary in your heart and mind to evangelize, you've got to have love and kindness and tact as it relates to people. Ephesians 4.15 says, speak the truth. That's the content. We don't ever back down from saying what the Bible says. But listen to the rest of that verse. Speak the truth. How? In love. That's what a Christian ought to do. And then, of course, another ingredient is you've got to have courage or boldness to say what God wants you to say. Uh, God told Joshua when he's about to replace Moses with Joshua, God says, be of good courage. Do not be fearful. Don't turn from the right hand or the left. Stay true and be courageous in your commitment to follow me. And friend, Christians need courage and boldness today. In Acts chapter 4, after some had been beaten, after some had been in prison, after uh, they're gathered together to pray for God's help, the Bible says they prayed for boldness. And God's Spirit was there among them as well. We need the boldness to say what God says. It isn't always easy to say, we've all sinned and fallen short. It isn't easy to look across the table from somebody who's never obeyed the gospel and say, we love you. God loves you. But if you don't get your life right with God, if you don't obey the gospel, sadly, you're going to be lost in sin. It isn't always easy to say that. We say it in kindness. We say it in love, but it takes courage and it takes boldness to talk to somebody about sin, to talk to somebody about immoral practices that have to be stopped, to, to, to look someone in the eye and say, your path is headed down the road to destruction and God wants to save you and we want to help you. Would you like to have a Bible study? Hey, it takes courage and it takes boldness, but each of us can do that if we really try. And then, friend, we've got to have as part of our ingredient to evangelize, We've got to realize what the proper method of evangelism is. We said it's not emotionalism, it's not entertainment, it's, it's not any of those things. What's the proper method of evangelism? Well, it's first century evangelism. It's house to house, friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family member to family member, in love and kindness, actually sitting down and trying to talk to somebody about the gospel. It's, it's sitting down with someone who you know and trust. It's sitting down with someone who uh, may not know God. And it's simply opening up the Scriptures. Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian eunuch and Philip are riding in the chariot and he asked him about Jesus. And from that point forward, he opened up the Scriptures to him. It's saying, that's a good question. I'm glad you're interested in knowing about God and about salvation and about what a person's got to do to be saved. Let's open our Bible and see what the answer is. It's not the emphasis on man. It's not the emphasis on books of men. It's not the emphasis on man's way of salvation. It's, is there any word from the Lord on that? Jeremiah 37, 17. It's, what does the Scripture say? Romans chapter 4, verse number 3. And so God's method is sitting down, opening the Bible, searching the Scriptures, Acts 17, 11, and pointing people toward Jesus. Friend, maybe you've never obeyed the gospel. Maybe you've never become a Christian. Our evangelism begins with you today. We want you to know two things. We want you to know, number one, just how much the God of heaven loves you. God so loved the world. That includes me and you. God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And secondly, we want you to know that our, our aim and our motivation is that we love your soul. We want you to go to heaven. We're not concerned about your money. We're not concerned about anything physical like that. That's the last thing. We're concerned about men and women going to heaven. Now, in view of that, what must a person do to be saved? Well, you've got to hear the message. The Bible says in Psalm 95, verse 7, Today, if you will hear His voice, don't harden your heart. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Once you've heard the message, you must believe. In Acts chapter 8, verse 34 through 37, Philip in the distance, or the Ethiopian eunuch in the distance, saw water, and he said, Here's water. What hinders me? If you believe with all your heart, you may. Do you believe in Jesus? Are you willing to turn from sin? Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Are you willing to make that good confession that the Ethiopian eunuch made? Acts 8, verse 36 and 37, The eunuch confessed with his mouth, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And friend, would you do what the Bible says to contact the blood of Christ and to be saved? And friend, that's to be baptized. Baptism is essential to salvation. Baptism is something you do before you're saved, not after. How do we know that? Well, that's exactly what Jesus said. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. Peter said it. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Paul was told it. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Acts 22, 16. And Jesus said, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Friend, we hope today's lesson will encourage each of us to be more evangelistic. And by, by default, that will help each of us to be more faithful so that one day we can hear these wonderful words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of your Lord. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.